Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs and today we want to uh, try to tear down and take apart uh, this little uh, infrared thermometer that I've introduced uh, to you at another video. So I've already prepared one to uh, find out how to get inside. Uh, what you need if you want to do it by yourself, uh, you need um, these little uh, spatulas, uh, which we also have as a set in our shop, and a small uh, Phillips head um, screwdriver. Uh, first you um, take out the little um, grip here, where the batteries are hidden inside. I won't do this here for this one, which we still want to sell. I've uh, prepared here this unit already with the uh, loose grip. Um, second, there are two screws here at the side, um, two little Phillips head screws, which you should unscrew. And uh, next is with the uh, spatulas, um, you can uh, release the uh, front cover, where also the um, laser LED is uh, attached to. And on the back side there is uh, the cover uh, for the LCD and for the three uh, push button. This is also, um, this can also be released with the uh, spatulas. And uh, next and last um, thing uh, is uh, just to get with the spatulas here between the two halves of the case and then everything should come apart. And so we ha here have the uh, trigger push button and there's not much inside. So let's see when we take out the electronics what we can find. Well, here we have the uh, optics with the, for you, difficult to see Fresnel lens inside. Perhaps if I, depending on the angle, perhaps now you can uh, see the uh, grooves, the circular grooves of the Fresnel lens. Now let's see if this comes off. Yes, it does. So here we have the uh, single element uh, Fresnel lens. I was, as I already told you in the introduction of the, this little infrared thermometer, that I was quite surprised uh, that here uh, we do not find a germanium lens, but a uh, apparently a plastic uh, Fresnel lens. So I didn't know uh, that there is any plastic that is transparent to uh, thermal infrared radiation in the range of uh, 10 micrometers. But apparently uh, there is a, a plastic and this of course keeps the, uh, the price uh, really uh, down. Otherwise it wouldn't be possible with an expensive germanium uh, lens uh, to get um, to uh, um, produce this for a few dollars. Now let's see, aha, uh -huh, okay. Here after unscrewing the um, plastic lens, here we can see inside the sensor element, which uh, is a special semiconductor uh, which has an energy level for the range of infrared photons, which is, uh, as I explained in the other video, only around 1 20th of the energy of a visible light. And what else have we got on the PCB, which is still attached to the battery holder? Well, thoroughly just a hidden under a blob uh, of, uh, uh, of, well, what is it? It's not celestic. Uh, this uh, material that hides the secret IC uh, down below. Well, it's uh, probably not secret, but uh, uh, that's the cheapest way to uh, assemble uh, 
such a PCB with uh, not an SO package, but a, well, what is it, chip on PCB or however you want to call it. Um, we have on the back side the LCD, which apparently can be clipped off. Let's see if we can disassemble uh, this to get a look at the sensor element. Uh, just make a break uh, for not to bore you too long. So what I first didn't see, there were still two little screws here with which uh, the LCD uh, plastic holder was attached. After that it got loose quite easily. And let's see if there's something down below. Uh, of course it's attached with uh, zebra strips. Here we have the LED backlight and behind that is the um, sensor element. Now I think I, it doesn't uh, make, uh, it doesn't give us very uh, much information if we will still could unscrew the black plastic cover of the sensor element. Perhaps we can see a little bit more. Yeah, here we have uh, the sensor. That's the important, uh, that's the detector, which where all, um, all of the physics uh, happens. And uh, there's nothing more here inside the uh, plastic light uh, cover. So that was all we could find. Uh, apparently a single chip uh, solution. Ah, we still have uh, one transistor or two. It is called Q2. So there should be two and a little IC. I will try to see. It's probably an, an op amp. Um, I will try to see if I can read the marking of the IC. So with our um, 20 uh, fold magnifier lens, which you of course also can get at our shop because it's a part that every maker should have. I could easily read uh, the markings here on this uh, little IC. Uh, it says TO215ME and then a 6. Um, uh, but uh, Google didn't uh, give anything um, uh, electronically as an answer. Um, so uh, I don't know uh, what this, uh, apparently it's an op amp. I'm not sure what it's um, used for. If it's really, if it were the preamplifier of um, the sensor element, then uh, it should be placed here nearer to the sensor element. Um, so the second uh, transistor here, if there's a Q2, there must be a Q1, is apparently for switching on uh, the laser diode. So not much else um, to see and to talk about. Interesting is that the sensor element has uh, four uh, pins. Uh, so it might be that there are, in fact, um, two different sensors inside to get uh, the difference reading between two, which are sensitive to dif two different wavelengths. And with um, the difference in their output voltage, if they are sensitive to two different regions of uh, infrared radiation, you can calculate um, by uh, the laws of physics uh, at which temperature the um, measured object is. So that's uh, perhaps the, the way they determine the temperature. And that could be the reason why we have uh, four pins here. So I'll investigate this a little bit further. Um, the sensor element itself, there are no more uh, markings and otherwise except for a few capacitors and resistors there's not much else. Um, apparently there's a little microcontroller which uh, also controls the LCD and all the other functionality. And well not uh, 
not very interesting what we found inside, but um, we couldn't expect more at a with a device that is uh, costs only a few dollars. Uh, but uh, interesting with how few parts in today's world you can realize a thermal infrared a thermometer which costs 10 or 100 times uh, of today's um, price uh, some years ago. And well, that was it for today. And with uh, in, in um, accelerated uh, frame rate, I will show you if I can really try, if I can really manage to get it back working and reassemble it. So everything back in place. Of course, the most difficult part, as you, uh, if you have watched it, was uh, getting here the uh, s switch again, uh, really attached, and the uh, battery uh, case. And um, well, it looks like it's uh, working again. We have. Uh, Scan gives us 23.3 volts. Does the laser work? Yes, it does. And so everything fine. Um, I hope you liked it. Um, and if you find out what this uh, op amp or whatever it was, TO215ME6 is about, then uh, just I'll leave a note in the comment. Thanks for watching. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanka Labs.